Hey, thanks for joining me today. I'd like to show you how to use the web dropdown control. We're going to enable it for multiple selection and handle the selections on the client. Let me show you how this will look. We have a drop down here on the page. I can come through and select any number of items that I'd like. Let's do those. And uh, then I can click on this button and it'll report back to me the number of items that are selected. It's pretty easy. Let me show you how it's done. Here we are now in Visual Studio 2008 and I have a standard ASPX page here in front of you. As always, we'd like to start off by adding a script manager to the page. So let's do that. And from here what I can do is go to the toolbox and drag on my web drop-down control. So Visual Studio brought in the register tag for me. And what I'd like to do is paste in um, some formatted markups so we can take a look at how we're going to set up the web drop-down control. Now you notice I have the ID here as WDD. Enable closing drop down on select. This enables a behavior so that as you're clicking on the check boxes in, in the control, it won't close up for you after you've selected one of them. So basically you have to click outside of the control in order for the selection to roll up. I have a data source ID pointing to a data source that I'll put in in just a moment. Based off of our data, we are looking at the title uh, property on the object that's coming in in order to display out uh, the, the information to the user. The value will be the ID or the unique key in this case for um, that, that data object. We're enabling multiple selection and I'm setting the width and the dropdown container width to be the same thing. Now what's different about what we're doing here instead of just creating an our event handler to handle things on the server is that we're opening up this tag here, the client events. And for selection changing, we're running a function, a JavaScript function called selection changing. That should be pretty self-explanatory. So what we need to do at this point is provide the control with some data. So here we have the object data source. Its ID is ODS. It's going after the book repository. Uh, we're just getting books. This will return 10 books up to us. So the final thing that we need within our markup is simply just a button that we can press in order to report back to us what's going on. So right underneath the object data source, what I'd like to do is place in a standard input button. This is not a server control. It's just an HTML button. Um, and then when they click on the button, when the user clicks on the button, we'll run a function called report. So we have two JavaScript functions. We have selection changing and then we have report. So let's open up a script block and start implementing these functions. So the way the script will work is we'll have an array set aside. And so when the selection changes, we'll fill up the contents of that array. And then when they run the report function, it'll simply look at the array and re report how many items are in there. So we'll start off by declaring a variable called IDs. And from there, we can go ahead and implement selection changing. We have the standard signature of sender and event args. Now let's declare a variable for the selected IDs. And we'll take a look at the event args and run the function of get new selection. And what this does is returns the items that have been selected within the web dropdown list. We'll create a new array in our IDs variable. And then from here, what we can do is simply loop through the selected IDs and fill up our array. So once we have the loop, we can just say IDs and then IDs.length. This is a great technique when you're working with these variables because that way you don't have to worry about extra counters or anything. Uh, the IDs, the first one, the IDs length is zero, so it'll go to the zero index and place a value there. So it's a little shortcut that's nice to use. Then we can go to selected IDs, put in our counter from the loop, and then say get value. So now we're placing the value of each one of the selected items into this array. Finally, the last thing that we need is a function for report. When this is run, we can simply uh, create an alert box that tells us how many items are in the array. Okay, so there are whatever the ID's length is, items selected. Let's run this and see how it looks. So here's our web dropdown. Let's select oh, five items. 
buttons. Now when we click on the button, we should say there are five items selected. And there you go. Well, thanks a lot for checking out this video. And if you have any questions about what you've seen, please feel free to send me an email at cshoemaker at infragistics.com. If you want to take a look at the documentation for any one of our products, you can go to infragistics.com slash docs. And if you'd like to contact our support, you can go to infragistics.com slash support. Thanks again for checking us out and make sure you check out the website where you'll find a lot more videos that'll help you get started with the NetAdvantage tool set. Infragistics. On the web at infragistics.com.